What's going on, my fellow A Plusers? Welcome back once again to a brand new episode of A Plus More Phenomenal, your weekly stop for your Power Rangers and Super Sentai review and news right here on our YouTube page, A Plus More Phenomenal. We're also streaming uh, on our A Plus Opinions page on Facebook along with Twitch as well, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you, everybody from across the internet, uh, certainly joining us here once again. Uh, I know some of you are getting used to the idea of us being back on YouTube. So uh, hopefully this is something we can all get a little bit more familiar with, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much for joining us, whether you are joining us from YouTube, Facebook or over on Twitch, guys, we always appreciate you uh, stopping by and certainly showing your support. And of course, listen, kicking off the week, ladies and gentlemen, happy Super Sentai Monday. Uh, no case of the Mondays here because we always know we can certainly rely uh, on some care measure to certainly hope right uh, uh, hopefully a wronged Monday or at least continue along with a great Monday here. So um, thank you very much, guys. Um, we're going to be getting into episode number 21 today of Kara Major. We're very much close to sort of that halfway point for this season. Um, and the momentum starting to build back up. This is something that I was really hoping for uh, after last week's episode that we talked about. Like, even though I wasn't the biggest fan of the episode, I certainly enjoyed it. But I was really waiting for an episode with some if you know what I mean, to really punch me in the face uh, and really start pushing us along into another major storyline. And it seems episode number 21 certainly is a hint at that. So thank you very much, Kara Major, for another great episode here this week, one that I was really, really uh, pleased with. If there was anything overall that um, really I really enjoyed, uh, I really was a fan of just the time traveling aspect of this week's episode. I thought the, the writing uh, for this week was pretty stellar, honestly, um, not only from just the flashback sequences, um, but especially with the Mabushina and Taka stuff. Um, and then, of course, um, just the um, um, magnificent writing, I thought, for the Marsk Beast this week, the uh, fisherman pole Marsk, and really just how they utilize the idea and concept of, of time traveling this week. So um, some really great elements, I, I thought, to be quite honest with you. But before we even break down this week's episode, let me go ahead and see who's in the live chat, who's joining us. We got Blossom. What's up, L'Oreal? Good to certainly see you here. Um, Blossom is certainly back with us here on uh uh, on YouTube. Uh, Not Ultra certainly has found his way back to us here also on YouTube. Sexy Boy certainly coming through. I believe that's AJ. I don't remember. There's so I don't remember. He, he's got so many names to be quite honest with you. And of course, Alec. What's up, Alec? Uh, appreciate you um, uh, stopping by over on our Facebook page. I believe I saw you did subscribe to us again uh, over on YouTube. So, hey, however you certainly want to go ahead and submit your view and watch our channel, man. We appreciate it either way. There you go. Forever, <laughs> forever grin, man. Appreciate uh, appreciate you stopping by uh, on YouTube. It's going to get a little bit more. I'm going to have to get used to this, guys. I'm going to have to get used to this. Listen, um, if you guys want to follow us on social media, um, certainly go ahead and do so right down here. A plus opinions, guys. We do have our own Twitch page, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter as well. So definitely go ahead and join us there. I, I am still kind of on the fence as to whether or not I want to do a separate Twitter handle for A Plus More Phenomenal. I'm still kind of up in the air. Uh, I am in the process of looking for like if I were to do that, I am kind of in the process of trying to see if I can find somebody to be like a social media uh, manager for that Twitter account, somebody that would pretty much just kind of control it, um, if you will. So we'll see if that's something that I wind up doing for A Plus More Phenomenal on the Twitter side, but I'm at least glad that we were able to establish uh, a YouTube page here uh, as well. So if you guys are interested, please go ahead and subscribe, guys. We've got to go ahead and build up that subscriber base once again. So hit that subscribe button along with that bell notification so when we do drop Drop brand new videos, guys, you will certainly be notified. And listen, guys, if you are new to this channel, this is just simply a new channel or yes, another channel you want to add to your Power Rangers and Super Sentai stuff. We like to highlight news and reviews from throughout the week here from Power Rangers and Super Sentai. So if you are looking for an additional home and you love having like a deep dive into a ton of this stuff, that's what we're here about, guys, trying to give you that A plus content, our A plus opinions in regards to everything Power Rangers and Super Sentai 
guys. So if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, guys, along with that bell notification. We definitely appreciate it. And if you love our content, if you love this video, hit that thumbs up, guys. We uh, definitely want to go ahead and let YouTube recognize our work and certainly recommend it to other people. So with that business out of the way, guys, let's go ahead and get into this particular week's episode, man. We're going to talk about Kara Major, episode number 21 this week, uh, as the curse has finally caught up to everybody. Um, kind of the idea of this week's episode is pretty much in the midst of Takamichi trying to hunt down for yet another Grancer uh, Stone. Uh, the curse sort of catches up finally to Mabushina. We see the crest of Yudan appearing on her right eye, which is uh, one of the uh, aspects of the curse that was certainly going to be going ahead and pop up. One that we weren't quite sure if it was going to happen or not, right? Like, yes, we kind of understood that the curse was kind of planted on Mabushina's mother, the queen. But it's kind of been a big question mark as to whether or not that curse would kind of continue down the lineage. Uh, and unfortunately, for Mabushina and the rest of the major, the answer is yes. Um, so uh, it does seem as though also, uh, according to Takamichi here, while he is hunting for it, for the Grancher Stone, we do see here that the Grancher Stone is gone. Um, I love how we immediately get Ataka and Shiguru sort of team up in here. Shiguru, who's kind of still hanging out in the area because they did pick up a faint sign that um, a, a mask beast was there, or at least uh, somebody from Jotunheim was there. So that's why Shiguru was certainly on the scene. When Taka shows up, he finds out, or at least the way that I put it together, it feels very much easy to just kind of connect the pieces, that it was, in fact, the Jotunheim monster that wind up taking the Grancher Stone here this week. Uh, and unfortunately for them, the Grancher Stone's missing. And also, unfortunately for Mabushina, on their field trip to the aquarium, this is when everything certainly sort of strikes for them. So the hunt for the Grancher Stone definitely continues, and it winds up leading us to meeting up with the Marsk um, the Marsk Beast this week and the Fisherman Marsk. Um, the Fisher, oh, is it the Fisherman or Fisher Pole Marsk? Yeah, I think it's the Fisher Pole Marsk because the guy literally had a fishing pole like as his nose. Like he could literally take it off and sort of use it as a weapon. Uh, pretty neat stuff, but I was a little bit confused and scratching my head as to why this particular character was sort of soaking wet, um, had like a grand opening sign kind of like still stuck to him and things like that. But this is really where the idea and the concept of the Grancer Stone uh, finally comes into place. Because during this battle, we do come to find out that the Marsk Beast does have the Grancer Stone in his possession. And the one thing that we come to learn about this Grancer Stone here this week is that it has the ability... Um, to manipulate time. I believe it's called the Grancher Stone Reversia. Um, it, it pretty much reverses time. Um, I believe it's Moryu who winds up saying that you can uh, adjust time or manipulate it or whatever the case may be. Um, and we come to find out that that's exactly what the Marsk is doing here. The idea that, I've, according to the episode, August 30th, he opens up the dimension, uses his fishing pole to like through this time portal to yank people out of that time. Um, and then I think he gets thrown into it because he gets pulled. This is where the care majors are, in fact, fighting. It's a pretty cool loop, to be quite honest with you. Like for Shiguru to be smart enough to pick up on the idea that he remembers seeing the pamphlet. August 30th comes around, it's raining, he remembers the store location, the idea that the care majors actually go to that location and find the Marsk Beast and the Fisher, a Fisher Pole Marsk coming back from his adventures in the past that they literally just encountered him in, um, I honestly thought was pretty brilliant in regards to storytelling. It, for me, it really made it quite fun. And I think it also goes to showcase just how smart the care measures really are that little things like that aren't just going to go over their head. They've got a ton of great and smart people and talented people, mind you, uh, on that team. So to see Shiguru uh, really flexing his brain muscle this week and kind of putting two and two together, I thought was really great. Again, the ability of having that Grancher Stone to go ahead and do the time traveling aspect uh, worked really well in here, honestly. So I, I thought that was pretty neat to see um, the, the Kara Major sort of catching him as now. Like the idea that he gets pulled through the time portal, has to face the Kara Majors, and then once he exits, thinking he escapes and goes back to August 30th, he literally plants himself back into the Kara Majors who have now sort of caught 
up with this time loop, if you will. And I, so I thought it was rather brilliant. I, I really did. Um, so uh, the one thing that stands out to me is I'm becoming a really big fan of these Grancer Stones um, from just the its ability that we saw from the very first one, the, the Grancer Stone that had the ability to dis for destruction, this one with reversal of time. Um, it has me kind of scratching my head as to what the abilities for the next two Grancer Stones certainly are going to be. But Takamichi's um, quest certainly has been cut in half, but the problem now is Takamichi has seven days in order to go ahead and save his sister. Can Takamichi find the rest of the Grancher Stones in a matter of a week? Uh, we'll certainly see what happens there. Um, <clears throat> but the curse, guys, the curse of Mabushina is really why Takamichi is finding or trying to find these particular Grancher Stones. So let's talk about this curse here because one of the really great aspects of this week's episode, you guys know this already about me, I'm a sucker for a great flashback. And if there's anything that's, uh, listen, Kara Major does a ton of things right. One of those things is how they tell their story sort of in these flashback modes. Um, you know, the realization here for Mabushina to realize that something is wrong with her and she's not quite sure what's going on. And having the rest of the team now realize if there's any time to tell Mabushina what's going on, it's now. And I will say this, I'm super thankful that they decided to go ahead and tell her the truth now instead of trying to continue to lie to her or to try and continue to um like not necessarily ignore her um but just kind of blow it off like it's no big deal so i'm glad that they actually opened up to her told her the truth instead of her not finding out until it was very last minute i mean granted like uh, uh, officially her life is sort of in jeopardy so i guess you have to tell mabushina um uh, but regardless i feel like at any point in time they could have lied to her but i'm glad that they certainly didn't and if there's anybody that i wanted to tell this story I'm glad that it was fire. Um, for me, fire does add sort of a little bit more credibility to the story just because we know how long fire uh, has has been around for, right? Um, considering the fact that he was sort of the official Karame stone for King Orden himself, uh, he, they've been through a heck of a lot together if there's any like uh, a, um, a person that you or a person or a thing that you want to get your planet of crystallian history from it's probably fire so i'm glad that he was the one that definitely uh told the story here but he winds up telling us a story of the witch uh uh numajo numajo the witch of the stagnant sea numajo is her name um we come to find out that numajo is sent over to planet crystallia um, she's now been sort of promoted as um the army of yodan commander she's now a commander uh and i guess one of her first tasks is to go ahead and go to planet crystallia to go ahead and uh I guess, put a curse on the entire planet. But this is where King Oridin and his special team winds up coming in um, to kind of go ahead and save the day. Um, the special team, which I thought was great, was King Oridin, Takabichi showing up also, and of course, the queen herself, which I honestly did not expect to see the queen uh, get into some uh, some action. Uh, but the fact that we even saw the queen uh, getting into it, I thought was brilliant, honestly, right? Like not showing that she's just a pretty face that sort of sits on the throne that she does not mind getting her hands dirty and protecting uh her planet and her husband so i i thought that was really cool to kind of see the queen uh step up in that manner um so we get to see our special team of those three along with uh not only the red caramel stone in fire but also aqua caramel stone the uh, one of the blue stones uh as we get to see them and i think the, they say the reason they bring the blue caramel stone along or the aqua stone is because it has the ability to protect them from curses uh, uh unfortunately for us in the middle of the battle king orden winds up losing it and we do see eventually um uh numajo getting sort of the upper hand with the assistance of her sister mind you uh what did it, what was her name let me see if i thought i wrote her name down Minjo. Minjo is her name. Um, so we got twin witch sisters here, <laughs> and new uh Numajo and Minjo. Um, but we do see that it winds up in she winds up incapacitating the aqua stone. I believe she winds up spitting like some of her own poison on it, um, really keeping it away from King Orden. And King Orden has no way to protect himself. And this is how uh uh Numajo winds up putting a curse 
on King Oridin before Oridin winds up sort of slashing her down. Um, I thought the story was brilliant. I, I especially thought that the special effects in here were stellar, to be quite honest with you. There's something about just the 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 darkness of the scene, the dark sky, the way like for, for some reason it just made all the special effects um just sort of pop that much more. Um seeing Numajo and King Oridin go toe-to-toe -to -toe was fantastic. Seeing exactly how Numajo put the spell on King Orden and how it just it now translates down to the, the women in his life that he certainly loves, taking out the queen in seven days and now potentially taking out Mabushina uh, in seven days also. So, um, guys, I thought the storytelling in here was brilliant from just the use of time travel um, to giving us that flashback and full story about this curse uh, from Numajo and exactly how it affects um, this particular uh, royal family now, uh, I think is brilliant. But one of the things that really kind of stands Stands out to me, especially towards the end of this episode, we see Taka um, thrilled that he has the Granter Stone back and wants to talk to Mabushina about it. But he winds up leaving the team in the middle or just before they start going against the huge Marsk beast that we wind up getting here this week that definitely starts causing them some, causing them some troubles. I honestly thought the design was pretty cool of seeing the gigantic Marsk beast, the idea that its head is literally like a ship and it's going through the city uh, on its roads like it's going through the sea. Uh, I, I thought the design was, was really, really cool. Um, but we are getting to the point now where the care majors seemingly have found um, perhaps a villain or Marsk beast that may be too difficult for them to certainly handle because by the end of this episode, we see them getting their ass kicked. And I'm thinking to myself, where is Takamichi? Like, why isn't Takamichi there? Yet Takamichi is thrilled to be able to finally show Mabushina, hey, we got number two of this Grant of Stone instead of number four. And I love that Mabushina honestly kind of puts him in his place, um, kind of starts explaining to him. I don't want to say explaining to him, but I guess the realization of what's truly important, right? Um, the idea that I get that you want to be a hero for me, but I want you to be a hero for everyone, right? Like it shouldn't just be me that you're concerned about. You should be wanting to save this city and save your fellow friends and things like that. And I'm sure Taco will probably jump back onto that opportunity to go ahead and help his friends out. But what I loved here is the realization of just, I think Takamichi understanding that Garza has had the upper hand in this and in his mind for the longest time. You know, one of the questions that I have been asking myself leading up to this is the idea of why did Taka leave Planet Crystallia in the first place, right? Like, why wasn't he there in, in, in the beginning? And um, the, the big answer to that is that his quest for the Granter Stones, his quest to go ahead and leave Planet Crystallia so he can hopefully save his sister. But it's not as simple as that, right? It's not as simple as the idea was Taka's alone. No, it was not Taka's alone. Apparently, Garza had a huge role to play in that, getting into his ear as Garza seemingly has done. I mean, goodness, we, we've seen this already uh, in this season about how Garza has gotten into Taka's ear, how he's sort of putting out those ideas of influence, right? Um, trying to lure Taka over to the Jotunheim side this entire season, right? The idea that Mabushina sort of puts Taka in this place is like, it's that same foolishness that of you running off to go ahead and search for these treasures when people are in danger and need your assistance. And it's that foolishness that you allowed Garza to kind of get into your head about. And I, I love the fact that she puts that all into realization for him because then we even get a cool shot of Garza sort of laughing. And in the background, you just see a collage of this planet Crystallia destruction, if you will. And I think, again, it continues to show just how personal this story is between, excuse me, <clears throat> just how personal this story is between Taka 
and Garza or and just Garza and just the royal family in general. The fact that it's been Garza this entire time that's been talking into his ear, influencing, influencing him, right? One of the reasons why we've been asking ourselves, why was the takeover of Chris Dahlia so easy? It's because Garza convinced Takamichi to get out of there, right? He should have been a hero for his own planet, but he started worrying so much about just one person and forgot about the masses. Uh, and unfortunately for him, that brought the destruction of Planet Crystallia. And now he has that opportunity to prove himself once again, right? I feel like this is the theme for Takamichi to cer certainly sort of prove himself that he can be that hero, that he has to kind of stop shrinking his mind and his focus on, I don't want to say small things because they are imperative. They are important to him. But he also has to understand that there are bigger pictures out there that sometimes you maybe have to make that willing sacrifice that, yes, while I do want to save my sister, I do have to be that hero and make sure I protect as many people and save as many people as I possibly can. And I think it's a really interesting di dilemma for Taka and a really great theme for him for this season to see if Taka Michi will become the hero that he needs to be. And instead of being sort of foolishly or I should say, you know, yeah, foolishly guided um, by all the wrong things that maybe Garza has kind of force fed him into his mind. So I I, I, I absolutely loved it. Um, so I thought that little uh, brief little um, interaction between Mabushina uh, and Takemichi said a lot, uh, and it definitely went a, a really long way also. Um I haven't had the op quick honorable mention. I haven't had the opportunity to check out the preview for next week's episode, but I'm having a feeling that we're probably going to be seeing uh, the King Express Zabune or the the new Zabune um, uh, mecha here in just a little bit. Um, the fact that we start off this week's episode with like a little education on sharks and things like that, um, I thought was a, a cool nod to the idea that yes, the, the Zabun is like, is a shark theme, if I'm not mistaken. I believe the train has literally a shark head at the end. So, um, when I saw this, I was thinking, okay, they're easily teasing the idea uh, of Zabun is definitely going to be happening here. I love the fact too that this wasn't its own enclosed episode, that it kind of left very much on a to be continued, right? Like a little bit of a cliffhanger to see what's going to happen next week. But I'm definitely getting that feeling that that's what they're building up to. The idea of the Aqua Karame Stone, I wouldn't be surprised if that's connected to Zabun. Uh, we even, I think Tommy Tomo even made reference in this episode about, you know, oh man, I wish we had the King Express around, or where's the King Express when you need them because they need something that's able to attack and move fast. Um, so it's coming, guys. If it doesn't come in next week's episode, I honestly would be really surprised. Uh, but definitely look out for that. Um, but yeah, guys, I thought this episode was really, really solid. Again, from the great flashbacks to the great storytelling of the battle between King Ordin and Numajo, the Witch of the Stagnant Sea. I thought that was cool. Seeing more of the Grancher Stones, learning about them, and the use the usage of the time traveling, I thought was really stellar this week. Uh, I, 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 I have, I really have no down parts to talk about this week's episode honestly i thought it was really really stellar and i a really great change of pace from next week's episode because now i feel like we're really into uh, a pretty satisfying storyline arc that we'll hopefully get here within the next episode or uh, or two sort of thing but I, i'm loving how episode 21 certainly started this off but guys listen at the end of the day this is simply just my A plus opinion. At the end of the day, I want to know yours. So let me know what you guys thought about this week's episode of Care Measure in the live chat or the comment section box below. Uh, and with that out of the way, guys, let me go ahead and jump over into this comment section and see what some of you guys are saying here. Seems like you guys have been pretty active over here, so I appreciate it. Let's see if you uh, have talked about, about this week's episode. <clears throat> Uh, let's start off with Blossom here because she she likes to get to these 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 uh, comments early here whenever she can. She says uh, the episode was pretty good, um, but I'm turbo worried about poor Mabushina. Um, yeah, I don't know the direction in which this season is going to go. Um, it is one of those things where I don't know if um, if well, like will they really kill off Mabushina? Are we going to get that dark in here? I mean, we already lost the king of uh, King Orden. Um, uh, it'll be interesting to see if they don't pull any punches uh, or if we're going to have a happy ending for Mabushina and Takamichi. Like, I, I probably would be pretty heartbroken 
if Mabushina did not make it through this episode. I mean, if she if they kill her off, I'm not going to complain, honestly. But uh, I think it would be a really ballsy and bold move for them to certainly do. I mean, we'll talk about um, pulling on somebody's heartstrings, uh, mission accomplished. So we'll see what happens with Mabushina in here. But keeping my fingers crossed that they certainly do uh, save her. Um. Uh, Blossom says, uh, from the way Shiguru used that sword, I have a feeling my favorite Sentai Cutie Pie in red influenced his care mentality again. Um, I don't know if Juro influences care mentality again. I feel like, if anything, Shiguru has kind of already been showcasing that he's growing in this care mentality. Like, I feel like they probably are... Um, a training for sure. Like I'm, I'm, I'm I don't want to say he ha he didn't influence him again. I just think that his influence originally from that first episode is still very much sort of carrying over. Like I don't believe Shiguru and Red had a conversation or Shiguru, you know, um, uh, Juru um, practice this particular move with him. I just think the influence that Juru had on him very early on in this season has just stuck with Shiguru, and now he's taking his own personal time to grow himself as a Kara major and checking out brand new um, sort of techniques. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of where I'm I'm definitely feeling that uh, at for sure. But I do think Juru's inspiration certainly comes from that for the very first few episodes for sure. And you also say, uh, I still say Orden is alive. Um, who knows? I, I hope he, I hope that he is. I hope that he is. Hey, Jinsaku. What's up, Jinsaku? Uh, it's Jay Savage over from uh, Time for Toku. What's up? Appreciate you coming through. I'm not sure if you had the opportunity to check out this week's episode, but I hope you did. I hope you did. <laughs> Forever Grin says it's gonna kill me. I forget her name, but it's a dog. Uh you talking about gadget. Did somebody see gadget in the back? It look I think it was uh blossom. Yeah, that's that's gadget. Uh that's my uh lab and pit mix uh doggy. She's nine years old, but yeah, her name is her name is gadget. <laughs> blossom says when fire butted in trying to explain the curse sure it had to be said but still i like how juro's face was like what the heck fire yeah i wasn't sure if that face from juro was like what the what the heck as in like why'd you interrupt me or like was it a what the heck like a uh like like that expression of um like was it did you ignore me or um, don't tell her sort of thing. Like, I can't believe you're opening your mouth and tell her sort telling her sort of thing. So wasn't quite sure which one it was, but uh yeah, it definitely made me chuckle a little bit. Uh, now Ultra says Kara Major was really good this week. I really like how the Kara Major's uh, Kara Major has been pacing itself because while there may be some fillers here and there, uh, this show always finds itself back to the main plot. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. And I, I you know, um, even with the episodes that are a little lighter, um, I feel like they're. I don't want to say few and far between, but I feel like, like you said, the pacing is great, right? Like we may get two, three episodes like that, but then boom, we get ourselves a, a nice little chunk of good story. Then maybe one or two, boom, a pretty, you know, pretty solid. Like I, I've really enjoyed every episode with the exception of maybe one. Um, but like, I've thought that they've all been relatively solid. And even though that they have, some of the episodes have been lighter than others, it's not like we get like six or seven of them in a row before we actually get to something good, right? I feel like they're definitely breaking it up for sure. And even those latter episodes, while they may not be strong plot devices to get the overall story sort of moving forward, they still tend to kind of give you further development for these characters and seeing their growth and learning a little bit more about them. So I think that they're they're really handling themselves well. So I definitely agree with you there, not Ultra.
Uh, Forever Grin says it still feels super long knowing there's uh, 50 something episodes. I am kind of curious how many episodes we're getting this year. Um, are we getting 50? Is it 48? Is it 46? If you guys know how many episodes uh, of Care Measure we're having, definitely let me know. Uh, Blossom says, hope once the Rangers go back in time that the gang find the Aqua Stone too. Oh, I'm assuming um, oh, maybe I think you might be talking about something I haven't seen in the uh, um, in the uh, the preview or something. Um, now Ultra says when they had the Aqua Caramay stone, if I didn't follow scans, probably would have thought there would be uh, been a, a Aqua Ranger added to the team. Maybe there will be one in the last quarter of the show. And if they do, um, I would want it to be Mabushina, but I'm pretty sure the Aqua Caramay stone will become Mosh and Zabun. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if that whole entire Caramay stone, similar to... Um, how Takamichi transforms. I'm wondering if the Aqua Karame stone will transform it to like just grow as a as a bigger stone and then transform sort of from that into maybe its own Zord into its own uh, train line or whatever the case may be. Um, I, you know, if I had to, if I had to guess, um, I well, if I had to choose, yeah, I would love to see Mabushina become sort of like a uh, an Aqua Ranger <laughs> for the Karamejas. I think that'd be cool. Um, Alex says um, they really need to uh, need to deal with Garza because if I learn anything about the main general, uh, it's going to be sticky. Um, yeah, you know, I don't want to say they haven't had their opportunity to to go after Garza, but I feel like, um, yeah, maybe they just haven't had that that one opportunity where the whole team can kind of go after him. But yeah, Garza definitely feels very much like the the number one general here. Like I'm not feeling like there's somebody else bigger behind him but maybe there is if there is we haven't really been hinted at that really um but yeah they definitely need to deal with garza at some point in time for sure uh blossom says uh, garza is so gonna pay for messing with takamichi's head uh probably probably i would not doubt that at all Um, Alex says, uh, I like seeing the queen. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, I really did. I was wondering when we were going to finally get to her. I'm hoping that this isn't the last that we've seen of the queen. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing her in other flashback moments. Like for me, I really would love to see uh, what her relationship was like with Mabushina. I feel like even though Mabushina was relatively younger, um, it would be cool to just kind of see how the queen certainly was like uh, as a mom before having that curse uh, sort of put on her. But I'm glad that they showcased the queen here and in, in her fighting style like that, you know, working with her staff and stuff. Again, see, showcasing that the, the queen, not just looking pretty on the throne, but that she, she doesn't mind getting her hands dirty and kicking some ass when she certainly needs to. So uh, I'm with you there, Alec. I really in, enjoyed seeing Uh, sexy boy says i wonder if care measure footage will be used in dino fury i highly doubt it but he says even if it's just the rangers watching something or we see a poster like for me I, like a cool little easter egg poster i think would be pretty neat honestly um but that's probably the extent of what what I, like not that what I'm cool with, but like I feel like if if they are gonna use anything Kara major wise, maybe something like that. But I honestly don't see that happening at all. Um, but you know, I can I can I can I can wonder. But yeah, if anything, maybe poster, maybe like a comic book on a comic book stand or something like that. But I wouldn't want like a focus on it.
Uh, Forever Green, you're having some issues here, Alec, with the comments. Uh, if, uh, your comments are coming through fine, just fine, it seems like to me. I'm just skimming over everything. I'm not able to get to everybody's comments, so I'm just kind of skimming through everything. Um, Sexy Boy says, do you think when season three of Beast Morphers return, we won't have any high A's? Season three? What are you talking about? We're still on season two. AJ, how long have you been watching Power Rangers for, man? You know you know, Power Rangers has two seasons, seasons one and season two. So, yeah. So, you, I, I'm assuming you mean season two? Uh, do you think when season two of Beast Morphers returns, we won't have any hiatus at, la at least for two months? Nick loves giving us hiatus for no reason. Only time we do uh, get one is for the Kids Choice Awards. Um, no, I don't. I mean, once this comes back, I don't see it having another hiatus. I mean, maybe blank for one week. Um, but that's really pretty much about it. Um, but I, I just see these episodes just playing completely through. But you know, there's never a season three of these shows, man. Um, not Ultra says, um, side note, I know your other Go, Go Buster videos are gone, but I would still like for you to finish your Go Busters reviews, whether it's review style, style or watch along. You only got 12 episodes to go. <laughs> um, uh, yes, I will be finishing off Go Busters. I am still trying to figure out how I want to do this, though. Um, I probably am going to go along the route of maybe more watch along. Like, I'm wondering if may like, I'm wondering, like, I... <laughs> Like this just happened to my YouTube page. I should not be taking chances or risks, but I'm wondering if like in the middle of like the watch along, if I have the timestamp up, right. And we're going through the episode. I'm wondering very much if like I can throw up just an, like an, uh, a scene for like 10 seconds and take it off. But I almost don't even want to try and, and do it that way, to be honest with you, just cause I just feel like, I'm just asking for trouble. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you guys have seen other, if you guys have seen other people do reaction videos for Power Rangers or Super Sentai, how are they doing it? Are they doing it with it on the screen how we used to, or are they doing it similar to sort of our watch alongs? Definitely go ahead and let me know where we don't have the audio or the video on screen. It's just me reacting and watching it. Um, uh, and then maybe a timer or something like that. Let me know how you guys have seen other video. If you have seen other reaction videos uh, for Power Ranger stuff, go ahead and let me know. But I'll, I'm going to think on that, not Ultra. If anything, maybe I'll, I don't know if I'm going to start the Go Buster reviews again this week. Um, but I will be. I, I, I will start them up again. Don't worry about that. Um, we also have common rider reviews that are going to be starting up next week also we've got common rider saber um uh stewart um if some of you who might know from our other videos on a plus opinions uh he does reviews he did reviews for legends of tomorrow for our star girl stuff and he joins me usually weekly on a plus hero report um he's going to be diving into some common rider saber and probably will be bringing you guys um uh, those reviews for a plus more phenomenal. So um, stay tuned to those starting next week. Uh, Cause yeah, he, he uh, Stuart will be tackling those for you guys. Uh, let's see here. Sexy boy says so refreshing being back on a plus more phenomenal. I felt like being on hiatus uh, for a few months. You and me both. Uh, you and me both. I, I felt like this has been one gigantic hiatus for me over the past month, to be honest with you. Um, not Ultra says, I'm thinking that maybe the witch or the sister of the witch will become the final bosses. It all depends on uh, how they are defeated uh, next episode. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting to see if uh, Minjo pops back up uh, and what happens with uh, Numajo going forward also. Sexy Boy says, if Hasbro and Toei split becomes official, maybe Dino Fury will go all out. Um, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm kind of assuming. That's kind of what I'm assuming. Um, 
I think if anything, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they put maybe just a little bit more money towards this year, maybe another $2 million. Um, they did do a $2 million increase from Beast Mall for season uh, one to the second half of Beast Mall for season two. So um, I'm hoping that um, come Dino Fury, instead of $22 million, maybe they'll spend like $24 million uh, and really go sort of all out. That's that's kind of what I'm hoping that uh, Dino Fury will, will end up being. Uh, for Evergreen says most people just talk like you do now. Um, that's why I watch Japan and May. Uh, I'd rather see you and him talk. Well, hey man, I, I appreciate that, uh, Alec. I really do, man. Um, um, okay, yeah, because I, I I wasn't quite sure. Like I I don't rem I don't recall seeing anybody really doing reaction videos with the videos up there. Probably for good reason, as I came to find out. Um, but I, I honestly wouldn't mind. Um, I, I'll try and perfect the watch along aspect of things, and as long as I can do that, then yeah, I'll um, uh, I'll probably go ahead and, and bring those back. And if anything, um, I'll probably not only do that for Super Sentai, but I'm honestly thinking about doing that as well, uh, for just Power Rangers in general. Like I'm I'm contemplating the idea of just going back to old Power Ranger seasons and just having um these uh reaction videos, or I, I don't want to call them necessarily watch alongs, but maybe maybe we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, I like. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'll still consider the Go Busters and Super Sentai stuff reaction videos because we're only doing one episode at a time. Whereas the watch alongs uh, for Power Ranger past seasons, I'm probably going to do a, a chunk at a time, like four or five episodes, um, sort of back to back, and we'll just kind of watch them all movie wise. I may pause in between just to kind of give just my brief thoughts uh, and stuff on the episode, and we'll just kind of continue through. So um, Netflix will probably come very in handy uh, for for some of those. So yeah, the Power Ranger throwbacks to some of the old seasons will be watch alongs. Um, but yeah, we will continue to do reaction video stuff for Super Sentai, just just not on screen since we're just doing it uh, one episode at a time. But uh, yeah, it should be good. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us here today at A Plus More Phenomenal, kicking off our Monday right with some Kara Major talk. Um, I certainly hope if you guys haven't had the opportunity to check out this week's episode, Sorry I spoiled it for you, but please go ahead and check it out. You certainly will not regret it whatsoever, um, so definitely go ahead and do that. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that bell notification along with that thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, and if you want to further continue discussion about this week's episode of Care Major, leave your thoughts in the comment section box below, uh, and we'll certainly go ahead from there, ladies and gentlemen. But um, until next time, uh, that will certainly do it for us. Um, but So do me a big favor, guys. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and keep it A+. I'll talk to you later. Caramay Chain!